you know, Loida, I want to go after expired. Um, I don't know what to say. What are they? Where do I get phone numbers? First of all, expires are properties that have come off the market unsold for one reason or another. Many times these homeowners do still need to sell. Some of them don't. And when I say don't, it's because they're probably not motivated. If you have called expires, you have probably had a lot of different experiences from either setting appointments on the first call or maybe they just tell you never call them again in your life or some of them they're like you know what things change so we're just not going to sell anymore so with that being said i'm going to bring my co-host back on robert with everyone that's watching go ahead and share a little bit about yourself that way they know exactly who i have on here yeah absolutely so it's always a pleasure being here and uh, always a captive audience uh, so I've been in the business since 1999. I've closed uh, a little over 2,300 deals in that time frame. I've been now a professionally paid coach for a little over 10 years, and I've been a broker since 2004. So uh, definitely been around the block once or 50 times. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yes, you have a lot of experience. Um, we got connected through our brokerage Real. Yeah. I think it was last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I prospect a lot. Expires for sale by owners. And we have also been very involved with your Facebook group, the Top Realtor Training, which if you are watching this, make sure to click on the link um, to his group. It's in the description box below. We're actually this month going over expired, expired role playing. So share with everyone just a little bit about your group so they know exactly what's going on in there. Yeah, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 7.30 Pacific Standard, 10.30 Eastern Standard, we'll spend a half hour, we'll break down basically a script a month. This month, as you mentioned, is expired. Um, and it gives us the opportunity to not only have inside scoop, inside secrets, things that I've done as a producer, and then things that I coach on as well. Um, and then, of course, we obviously work on the side of the skills because the larger part of the uh, group is to work on the skill side of things as much as the information side of things. So Absolutely. Yes. So mm -hmm. make sure to join that group every Wednesday. I'm on there as well. Um, but yeah, you know, get, make sure you have your pen and paper ready right now because we're going to be covering so much information when it comes to expired. You saw the title of this video. This really is the only video about expired listings that you need to watch right now if you want to succeed in 2024. Now, let's begin with the very first question. Obviously, I just said what expired are, mm -hmm. but you know, what are some of the reasons that listing come off as expired? Well, a good percentage of the time um, outside of the market condition, a good percentage of the time is a agent uh, takes a listing, uh, they celebrate. Yeah, awesome. I took a listing. Unfortunately, they don't really address too much on the pricing side of things. And, and, and then the property starts to get a little stale you know, whether they sign a three month, four month, six month contract and the agents get a little too intimidated uh, to address pricing and making adjustments. So instead they just kind of stand back and they start to pray and hopefully that this property eventually brings me a buyer. And unfortunately it doesn't. So obviously we find ourselves out of contract, falls off, becomes expired and it's now free game for everybody who uh, has the opportunity to get skilled up and learn how to go after these, uh, these expireds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, some other experiences that I have had when it comes to properties that have expired is because maybe they have had tenants in the property and the tenants do not cooperate with showings. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times maybe the agent just didn't know how to handle, um, maybe it was an investor or a property mm -hmm. owner that had mm -hmm. these tenants that were in place, things like that. So there's a lot of different mm -hmm. reasons. Yeah. Um, with that being said, the next question and for those of you that are watching this let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from and what specific questions you have about expireds but how can you find expireds well the the um, the most challenging and the hardest way is just going into the mls and then pulling up all of the expireds but and then you get the information and it's kind of like okay who do i call where do i call them and then you're kind of doing a lot of the um you know the uh, legwork yourself and that's kind of a little bit of the most challenging way the other way, the easier, simpler is buying a, um, a uh, provider uh, such as Vulcan or any of the other companies that are out there um, and get the leads that way or get away, it, not necessarily the leads, but getting the expired, uh, um, you know, opportunities out there so that you can actually, of course, uh, call them. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought up, you know, looking on the MLS, because I feel that sometimes agents think that, you know, I don't want to spend on a service to, I don't know, two or $300. And I'm just going to go and look at the properties. Mm -hmm. 
go and reverse search the phone number. And first of all, yes, you can do that, but it's going to take you so much time. Then by the time that you do find the phone numbers, maybe yep. you'll make one or two or three phone calls the entire day, and maybe they're not even going to answer. So yep. you want to be efficient and productive with your time. You're better off investing in a service that can provide you with that information. Yeah. Um, again, I invite you guys. Put your questions in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We have New Jersey that's watching. We have Columbia, South Carolina. We have Tennessee. You know, Robert, we're just going to take this international. So again, drop us your comments when it comes to expires. We want to make sure that we help you any way that we can. Yeah. So what are some of the ways to prospect expires? Well, there's two primary ways. Um, and what I mean by the two more primary ways are the most effective. Um, you can go after it so many different ways. But the number one is picking up the phone, calling these people. That's the way that it's going to be the most efficient way uh, to go through and calling these people. A uh, second way is an effective way. And that's actually going out and knocking on the doors. It does. It's not as efficient, but it is effective because now you're uh, in front uh, of that individual. Problem, though, is, is, again, it's not efficient because uh, you're driving around from one property to another property to another property. And then from there, after that, it just it's it drops off pretty drastically because you can go through, you can text them, you can email them, you can, um, you know, uh, do all kinds of other things that you can do that is very passive postcards, mailers, all that other stuff that just eh, it's just not as effective. So calling and knocking. So. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of knocking to expireds and mm -hmm. first of all, especially on the beginning days that they come off the market, they're going to be getting blown up on their phone with phone calls. Right. So if, you know, uh, if there's an expire that's close to you and you can go in person, the chances of you getting a hold of them or at least having a better conversation is going to happen that way. So very quickly, I want to actually do just, you know, um, the intro of a role play of an expired sure. so that people can see, and we can do two, one pretending that we're over the phone and then the other one, you know, you're knocking on my door. Sure. Okay. So we'll do the first one over the phone. All right. And then you want me to be the agent, of course. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, first thing right out the gate, the one thing we want to make sure that we do is we always mirror and match. We want to uh, assimilate the similar energy, the similar tone, enunciations, all of those things. That's how we're going to capture a good percentage of these people. But let's go ahead and do the phone one as an example. So here we go. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Loida. Uh, is this another agent? It, it is. And I'm sure, obviously, you figured out by now that, that your home did come up on our computer here as an expired listing. And Loida, I was simply calling to see when you were planning on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home. You know, at this point right now, we, we just couldn't find a replacement home. So mm -hmm. we're thinking that's a sign we're just going to hold off. Sure, absolutely. You can definitely hold off. However, if I may ask, you talked about a newer home. Where exactly is it that you were wanting to move to? We actually wanted to move up to Chico because um, our kids are going to be going to school out there. But at this point, we're OK with them just like dorming, them doing their own thing. So that's why we're like, you know what? The home didn't sell. It was probably a sign from God. We should probably stay here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I totally get that. And I can really appreciate that. As far as time frame is concerned, how soon were you wanting to be out there? You know, by the summer, okay. um, the kids, um, my son would be starting college in September. So if we could be out there by the summer, have a smooth transition, I think that would have been perfect. But at this point, you know what, um, we're just going to hold off. But sure. if you want, you can send me your information just in case we change our mind. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely do that. Now, you did mention to me as far as your kids going to school up in Chico. Is that Chico State? Yes. Okay. Now, I noticed you said plural kids. Is that like uh, uh, multiple kids that's going over there? Well, we have my son and then my daughter. She's going to be graduating next year and she wants to go out there too. Yeah, sounds great. I mean, you guys are in a position where you have the opportunity. You still have time on your side. Lloyd, I am curious though, if you could potentially get a full or similar priced offer on your home now, would you consider it? I mean, possibly. Do you think that that's still possible and something that can happen? I really don't know. I actually haven't seen your home. I'd love the opportunity to come on by and take a look at the home. Should I stop by at three o'clock or should I do that at four o'clock to come see it? Uh, you know what? I would have to talk to my husband first, but we're usually here on the weekends. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely do on the weekend, but I am curious though, Lloyda, what do you think actually stopped your home from selling? Um, you know, we had one of my cousins that was a new agent list the home 
they were really excited in the beginning and then i don't know they also work a full-time job in okay. nursing so i think maybe the, the attention just wasn't there yeah if at least from what, what i'm hearing i'm not trying to be of course disrespectful to that agent i do see that it was uh susie jones and as far as susie jones outside of it being family was there any other reason why you chose susie um no it was just family we figured you know maybe she can do it for cheaper yeah i mean that of course is always an option what do you think actually stopped it from selling though um i really don't know but you know what i actually have to get going but like i said if you want to send me your information and if we change our mind we can let you know well you mentioned to me that you guys would be available over the weekend would it be better for us to get together on saturday or should we do it on sunday so that i can see your home uh, probably saturday because my okay. husband will also be there yeah, awesome. Should we do something first thing in the morning, like nine o'clock? Or I can always stop on by a little bit later, like 12, which time works better for the three of us? 12, 12 would be better. All right, we can stop there. Awesome. Yes, perfect. There you go. So if you are watching this, if you're watching the replay, now you can see an actual example of how an expired phone call can go. And again, mm -hmm. these are role play sessions that we are actually doing inside of the Top Realtor training. So make sure to join that. But if you enjoy this little role play, let us know in the comments, because I feel that at the end of the day, um, until you see how someone says it, the questions that they ask, if you notice in the beginning, I told Robert, you know, we're thinking about holding off. That didn't stop him from continuing to ask me questions of, to figuring out, you know, what my motivation was. So yeah. Robert, thank you so much. And you know what? I think pretty much in person, it would be the same thing. Yeah, the only thing different is, is in person is um, you're still using the same script. The only thing different, though, is, is that you are going to take a little bit of a step back, especially, you know, female, male. I'm going to take a little bit of a further step back, make sure that I'm not uh, coming across intimidating. Um, and then, of course, my body language has got to be ideally mirroring and matching your body language. If you're kind of like leaning up on the wall, I probably would be leaning up on the wall as well. If you're kind of like leaning forward and maybe your hands up on your chest, OK, tell me a little bit more. Well, then I probably would be a little bit more forthcoming coming from that direction. So those are some things that you'll probably want to pay attention to in person is a little bit of the body language part of things. And when you do go in person, do you take anything? Do you recommend? I don't know. What is it? So so I basically it's very simple. I don't like to overcomplicate this. I'll, I'm going to start with um, what we don't want to take. What we don't want to take. I know agents, what they'll do is they'll go through. They create these CMA packets, run comms, put an Etsy, put an entire listing packet together, right? And then they go and knock on the door. Nobody answers. And then they end up leaving the information. I don't want you to do that because if you're knocking on two, three, five doors a day, you're doing all of that research, extra homework, that could be another hour or two added to uh, doors that may not open. So that's the first thing I don't want you to do. Um, what I do want you to do is keep it simple. And the way you keep it simple is you can have a bunch of these, what I call our expired flyers at the ready. And those expired flyers that would be at the ready, there's two sides to a sheet. And on one side of the sheet, you're going to have basically your plan of action. So your plan of action of what, what you do to sell a home. And on the other side would just be a very informal letter. Um, and um, doesn't have to be anything super duper crazy or fancy, just simply dear homeowner, notice your property didn't uh, sell in the uh, um, sell of recent, if you're still considering blah, 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 anything from that direction. The, the main thing though is, is, the, um, is the plan of action because you are gonna be in a position, you go and knock on the door, hi, um, Loida, my name is Robert, I'm a local realtor, and the reason I stopped by is because I'm sure you figured out that your home came up on our computer as an expired listing, and I was just simply stopping by to see when you were planning on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home. And then all of a sudden, Loida goes, well, what makes you so special? You know, Loida, I'm so glad you actually asked that question. As a matter of fact, here's my 22-point plan of action of how I get home sold. I'm curious, have any other agents shared with you their plan of action? Did your previous agent share with you? Well, I really honestly don't mind sharing you with what I do to sell homes. Did you want to do that now? Or we can do that later today, like 3 o'clock. So that's probably the only little bit of a difference. There you go. So hopefully you, you took notes on that one. Yeah. Let's say they did say, you know, I do have some time now. Yeah. Uh, would you be ready for like a listing appointment there? Would you pre-qualify them or what would be the next step? Yeah, absolutely. And and, and uh, people are like, well, wait a minute. Didn't you just say not to take a pre-listing packet? Yes, I did say that. I don't want you to invest time in that because that's going to take you, for some of you, it takes 30 to 45 minutes to put one together. You put three or four of them together and you go out and do that. 
when you're actually um, providing this, what do you think they're doing with that listing packet? They're dissecting it. No way. Oh my gosh, this dude really thinks he's going to get 6% commission from us. No way. That's not even possible. Okay. So that's part of the reason why I don't do that. However, I do go prepared. You should have basically a sales kit and that sales kit would include either you take your MacBook or your laptop or a tablet so that you can sit there and run comps with them. Also in your sales kit, you're going to have a, a purchase contract, a listing contract, maybe some disclosures, and you just old school it, put it in a, you know, in a folder and keep it in your car because you never know when there's going to be an emergency sale. <laughs> so, you always got to be ready. Always got to be ready. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so get that ready right now. After this call, if you don't have that, make sure you print out a blank listing agreement, a blank, you know, purchase contract, because you never know when you might come across someone that says, you know what, Loida, I actually do want to sell. We're on a time crunch. When can we meet? Yeah. We have something there. Or you do go and door knock and expires and they're like, you know what? We're actually ready now. We need to, mm -hmm. we need it to be sold like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Go to your cart. Perfect. You know what? I'm glad that I'm here. Great timing. Let's handle this right now. Yeah. And then just real quick, just to kind of add to that, because I did talk about sales kit um, every once in a while, we're going out, we're showing a property and then we're coming out of the property. We're working with our clients and all of a sudden you see a car pull up and they're kind of being nosy, right? Like, huh, uh, is that house for sale? And then you kind of read a little bit of that body language and you're, of course, being the salesperson and you go, hey, um, my name is Robert. You guys uh, looking at the property? Yeah. How much is it going for? Well, it's basically going for 500,000. You guys interested in um, uh, purchasing a home right now? Yeah, we're kind of toying with the idea. Great, do you have a realtor that's representing you? No, we're just kind of looking on our own. Perfect. Let me go show you the house. I do have my sales kit anyways, <laughs> right? So that way we're always ready. Exactly. Yeah. So along with going after expires and prospecting them, you know, there's also those common objections that we hear and i'm gonna put them on the screen mm -hmm. we couldn't find the replacement home that's the one that i gave you in our little role play yeah. we didn't get our price we didn't get any offers and mm -hmm. you know the agent just didn't know what they were doing yeah. so no matter what objection mm -hmm. or whatever people respond um it leads me to my next question how do you know if the expired is actually worth your time you really don't. Um, you really don't initially. But what you need to do in order to get to know if it's your worth your time is you have to be able to ask questions that are specific to their motivation. Okay. So initially you go through and you have no clue. You're calling them, you're knocking on their door and you have no clue, but you got to get into the point where you're asking them questions that are going to lead to their motivation. Loida, what's the benefit of selling this home? What are you guys most looking forward to? Who's actually most excited about getting this property and moving over to Chico? How would it impact you and your family if we were to get your home sold and get you over to Chico? We start asking questions specific to their motivation, then it's going to give us the, dang, this person is definitely motivated, right? But some of you, unfortunately, what agents will do is they sit there and go, oh my gosh, Loida, you have no idea. I'm the number one agent. Yes, we only have two agents, but I'm still the number one agent, okay? And my company does all of this other stuff. And I don't know if you know how the picture of our company, and we're sitting there talking about things that have nothing to do with the seller. And that's definitely not the direction you're gonna to wanna to go to. It's gonna be their motivation is how you find out whether it's worth your time. Exactly. Motivation. Mm -hmm. Because I hear all the time too, whether it's expires or even just circle prospecting, sometimes the homeowner will say, you know, mm -hmm. well, I wanted a million dollars, but you really know it's worth like 600,000. So then yeah. at that point, you know that they're not really motivated or you continue to ask a few questions. But yeah. what do you do in those cases when you get someone that's kind of like a like a smart ass? <laughs> Well, it, it, you, you also have to, we have to remember too, because sometimes part of the blame is on the realtor. As I mentioned before, um, what will end up happening is I am the new licensed agent or I'm the timid agent and I go on this presentation and I haven't taken a listing in like six months and then I go out there and then you just silly say, well, you know what, can you give me a million dollars? I don't know, but um, let's try. Here's a contract, sign it. And you're like, okay, cool, a million dollars. And then you come expired, but because I didn't do my job as the realtor and I didn't pre-qualify and I didn't go through and do my end of the, the of the job, now you're expired at a million dollars and even though it's worth 600,000, but Robert, as the realtor now coming in after it expired, I go through and ask you some questions along the line of what do you think stopped the home from selling? And you're like, I don't know. It's like, well, I noticed that you actually were asking a million dollars. How'd you guys come up with that price? Well, honestly, I was kind of joking and the agent just said, yeah, so I went with it. I'm like, okay, well, what's a realistic price that you would consider this time? 
well, I know my neighbor, Bob, across the street, he sold his for six twenty five, dollars and uh, he has a pool. Ours doesn't, but I think if we can get something in that vicinity, we wouldn't be opposed to it. Believe it or not, that stuff does happen with what I just described. But if they're a smart outlet, well, I'm going to still get a little bit deeper on their motivation because, again, we have to remember these people go through three months, four months, six months, right? And then that first week they have showing, second week, maybe they get this, um, you know, this random offer. Maybe they might get an accepted offer. And then all of a sudden it just kind of goes crickets over time. And then especially on the six month ones, they could go a month, two or three months from the last time they spoke to a realtor or somebody that came and take a look at the house. And then all of a sudden, bam, on Thursday, now all of a sudden there's 75 realtors calling me after three months of nothing. So sometimes these smart Alex are like, well, where the hell were you? You know, what were you doing, you know, during this time? So we have to make sure that we're always on the focus of their motivation. And I'm glad that you brought up the pricing because many times, especially if there's a newer agent, they might think, well, you know what? A listing is a listing mm. and I'd rather have something than nothing. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it's not going to sell. It's going to come off the market. Um, you're probably going to have a pissed off seller mm. because they're going to be like, well, Robert, you told me mm. you could get me that price. And now you're telling me I have to reduce it or that it's not going to sell. So you would actually be doing a disservice to that client by taking an overpriced listing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's say commission objections you know what robert you know the last agents charge us six percent so now we're we're looking for someone that's going to do it for less because clearly they couldn't get the job done at six yeah i totally get that and i can appreciate with where you're coming from loida however what i want to do is i want to share with you with what i do different are you familiar with the techniques that i use to sell homes by the way no i've never even heard of you or your company yeah, and that's perfectly fair and that's perfectly fine with what I want to do is share with you. I just need about 15, maybe 20 minutes. We can do that at five o'clock today or did you want to do it at six o'clock so we can compare the difference? Um, you know, I don't have time. Can you just tell me over the phone? Well, I mean, I definitely can. My presentation, however, is a visual presentation. Let me ask you this question, though, Lloyda. Have you ever noticed how some realtors sell a lot of properties where other realtors don't sell, don't sell quite as much? Um, yeah, I mean, there's some agents that I see their signs like in every single bus stop. Yeah, exactly. And with what I want to do, Lloyd, is I want to share with you exactly the differences. And I understand you don't necessarily have time, but you mentioned to me that your goal was to get up to Chico. You mentioned to me that you have a son and a daughter that are going to be going to school. So it sounds to me as if the, your ultimate and preferable goal is to get up there to Chico, isn't it? I mean, yeah, but I just don't want to go through the hassle of putting the home on the market, having people come in and out, and then the home doesn't sell. Can I share with you the benefit of us meeting for about 15 to 20 minutes? What is that? Well, here's the thing, Lloyd, is it's after the 15, 20 minute meeting that we're going to be having, you're going to determine whether it's going to be a waste of your time in regards to putting it back on the market. Or the best part about it is you see I'm a little bit different than all the other realtors. We get your homes uh, not only on the market, but this time we get it sold. I mean, because that is what you want, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean... That is, I would just have to talk to my husband about it just to make sure that, that he's still on board. Yeah, absolutely. And I totally get it. Your, hus your husband is a big part of the decision-making process. Now, how does he feel about making the move over to Chico? Um, he's excited, you know, because mm -hmm. we were actually looking at some homes that had land and there's a lot of horses out there too. And we have some horses. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he was excited about that. But again, you know, I'm not even sure. We're kind of disappointed. I completely understand. I would be disappointed if I was in your position as well. Lloyd, right now, the only thing I'm asking for is a 15-minute investment in regards to having a conversation. Like I mentioned, the best part about it is after the 15 minutes, you decide it's still not in your best interest to move forward, then that's okay. It's no big thing. However, if you and your husband make the decision that you do end up getting this bigger land, I'm the right agent for the job of selling your home, let's get you and your family up to Chico. So when your husband gets home, would that be better for us to do it at five o'clock or should we get together at six o'clock? You know what? We just don't want to meet. We don't want to meet just yet. We want to hold off uh, maybe like in a month, a month and a half or two. Sure. Um, yeah. Give us a call back and we'll see You know what we have decided. Yeah, absolutely. I totally get with where you're coming from. We can always wait another month. But if I may ask, though, I am curious, what would actually stop you from making the move now versus waiting another month from now? I'm just so overwhelmed with all of the agents that have been calling me since the home came off the market that I just don't want to deal with with any of that right now. Have you ever heard of where um, it's always best to strike while the iron is hot? Yeah. 
See, here's the thing. You mentioned to me that you've gotten about 60 calls already. Yeah, it feels like 600 calls. <laughs> and I totally get that, Lloyd. Here's the thing is, is that striking while the iron is hot, if we can take advantage of all of those 60 agents that have been calling you and regain new interest in your property, we want to take advantage of that situation. Can I share with you the other, the other good news? Yeah, sure. The, the moment that you make the decision to move forward on getting your property on the market and getting it sold is all of these calls are going to stop. So let's stop these calls. Let's get you up to Chico. Let's get you and your family and getting those horses that you're wanting on that bigger land. Let's get together, Loida. Again, all I'm talking about is 15 minutes. If it makes sense, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Did you want to do that at five o'clock or would you rather do that 15 minutes at six o'clock? I mean, I can't promise anything, but I think six o'clock would be better. Perfect. And I'm not expecting any sort of promises right now. The only commitment we have is a 15 minute session. So I'll see you and your husband later on today. Okay. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That was great. And Thank we you. do have a question. I kind of try to blend it in. If you see here, so Luz asked, she said, what if the seller doesn't want to meet just yet? So let's say I kept being adamant, like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. meet. What would you say then? Well, you, part of it we have to understand because there's so many different directions that we can go to. Um, in this particular case, there was motivation. So in that, if there's motivation, I'm going to continue. It's kind of like blood in the water for a shark. I'm not going to go, okay, I'll come back in another month from now. Because what am I going to do in another month from now? In another month from now, some other stronger agent um, is going to take the listing and I'm going to call you up and Lloyd, hey, it's Robert just reaching out to you. What do you guys think? You guys ready? Well, we're already three weeks into um, escrow. We already got a buyer. I'm like, oh, thanks. Awesome. I appreciate it. So if, there, if the motivation is high, we want to make sure we continue to move forward and we always focus on their motivation. However, if their motivation is low, people that become, in a sense, let's call them greedy sellers. If you get me a million dollars, then I'll sell it. Well, those people, then whatever. We just, in a sense, move on. With expireds, we have to understand it's a little bit of a different source than all the other sources because we have to create that urgency in the actual consumer and we have to create the urgency in ourselves. The average is going to be about five to about six closes before we actually end up setting an appointment. Some of you will go, well, I'm a great closer, right? And your closing is, so what do you think? You want to get together? Oh, in another month? Yeah, you're right. I'll call you in another month. And then we go back to the scenario. So we want to make sure we understand the person's motivation. And in this particular case, if you sat there and said, you know, give me another month and I didn't do my job, I know a larger percentage of them are going to end up listing with another agent that's stronger than me. So we have to do everything in our power to do that. Excellent. Now, condition versus objection. Yeah. Um, I think this is really important for agents to know uh, mm -hmm. because it kind of ties into motivation and mm -hmm. also being able to know when to follow up or not follow up. Um, so can you just describe for everyone that's watching that maybe has no idea what this is, what is a condition and how does it compare to an objection? Yeah. So as far as a condition is concerned, it's something that we can't overcome. Uh, no matter how much you want to, no matter how much I want to, you just simply can't overcome it. Let's say, for example, you ended up coming up um, on the computer as an expired and then, you know, um, unfortunately, you ended up losing your job. Right. As an example, that could be a condition. So now. Um, I'm calling you and you're like, well, I, I, I'd be interested. But the problem, though, is I just lost my job about 30 days ago. And, you know, the house that we're looking for, I know it's going to require me to have some version of an income. Well, that's a condition. And I can't, no matter what, overcome that. Um, other things, for example, finding out, you know, whether it's pregnancy, being taken off of pregnancy, um, all of a sudden uh, everything completely shifts. Hey, my, the job transfer, they ended up canceling it after all. And I'm not going to end up going, you know, to, you know, Mississippi after all. So I have to stay here until I get a new job, uh, job transfer. So some of these conditions that we can't overcome, we have to understand that. An objection is the opposite. The, uh, the objection is, in an objection, it's basically, well, we're waiting for the market to crash. We're waiting for the interest rates to go back down to 3%. We are, um, you know, we're waiting for the perfect home. Now, the reason why this is an objection is because we can overcome some of this stuff. I can't overcome you um, wanting to go to Mississippi, but you don't even have a job there, right? But in the, uh, I'm waiting for the interest rates to drop. I'm waiting for house pricings to drop. I can overcome these things as long as I'm prepared with the, of course, objection handlers. 
So when it comes to objection handlers and scripts, mm -hmm. where can you find them? Well, there's a bunch of different places. One of the best places is just come join us on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> yep. So you come, I give I give you guys the scripts. That's definitely one of the best ways. I I you know I come through the Mike Ferry tutelage. So I basically just go to the Mike Ferry website. But again, there's there's certain scripts that I have that I've used that are not necessarily on there, and I'm not trying to sell Robert versus anybody else. Um, all I'm saying is is that there are different ways of going that. The best way though is to join the uh, group on Facebook, and again, that's on top. That's called Top Realtor Training, which is one of the links uh, down yes. below. Yes, and mm -hmm. I think also no matter what script you do end up using, make sure that it's not one that has like a lot of BS information. So like, let's say it's a for sale by owner script. Don't be saying, oh yeah, you know, I do have a buyer when you really don't, or that you go and preview the house for your buyer, but you really don't. And then you take a listing agreement. Cause there's a lot of, you know, I don't know, questionable scripts out there. So just make sure that the one that you are following um, is from someone that, that is doing the right thing. Yeah, and there's again, a lot of watered down versions out there. Yes, and if you're enjoying this live stream, go ahead and give this a like. Um, Robert and I like coming on here, training, teaching you. Um, we've mentioned the Facebook group quite a few times. The link is in the description, so give us a like. We still have time. Drop us your questions. Um, once again, we have people everywhere. We have Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I saw my, Mike. Mike, he's out in Chico, right? There we go. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Um, a question that I wanted to highlight. So Rebecca said, I've not called an expired yet, but I'm also new. Would you say expires are the best to call for a new agent? So um, it, it's a little bit mixed and I'm gonna share with you as to why. It's great from a couple of different perspectives. The highest value in terms of a contact to a likely listing is gonna be number one for sale by owners because 100% of them raised their hand and said, I want to sell my house. Now expires is the next one. Now, why is it not 100%? Well, because sometimes as we just kind of went over some of the conditions, people's minds ends up changing, but there's still a large percentage of them. It's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. But, you know, the problem is, is you're competing with 50 other 50 to 100 other agents for the exact same listing and opportunity. That's why this is a great source, because there are a lot of people you can identify 50, 60, even 70 percent of them will actually come back on the market to sell. However, the yes and the no part is it does require a little bit of extra skill um, in regards to uh, capturing them, because just calling them without having any skill, well, it's going to be a little bit tough, you know, to compete against some of the people that are very highly skilled. So get yourself skilled up, attend the classes that we're that, you know, Lloyd and I are doing, get yourself there, you know, continue to work on it, practice, call them, get beat up, chewed up, fail, but I want you to fail and I want you to fail fast. I want you to fail forward. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, bam, there's that one. Here's the reason I share it from that perspective. As great as I felt as if though I ever was, every once in a while i would go on this expired listing appointment and i wouldn't get it okay not that that's surprising but what was surprising is the fact that i would call back and say hey who'd you guys end up going with you guys went with susie jones i don't even know who that is um oh she's a brand new agent she's never sold a property well i'm curious why'd you go with susie oh she reminds you of your niece well that's a cute decision <laughs> And I'd lose, I'd lose listings to basically people that were brand new, their first listing, whatever it is. So there's no exact science to it, but you can put yourself in a better position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've talked about role playing and practicing on your scripts. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I brought, when I was brand new in the business, I was calling expired. I was mm -hmm. not very good. I remember one of them saying, why are you asking me so many questions? Um, so at that point, I was like, you know, I need to get better because if people think that I'm interrogating them over the phone, then I need to be more smooth. But I specifically remember one day I had been calling all day and my goal was to talk to at least 30 people, 30 conversations every single day. And it was around four o'clock and I'm like, you know what? Everyone's been rude up to this point. I haven't got anybody interested. And finally, I got a gentleman and he was just telling me, oh, you realtors are you suck, you're vultures, you just want a listing. And I'm like, oh man, you sound very upset. What happened? Because I had seen that he had expired twice over 200 days on market. So when I see something like that, I'm like, maybe this person is motivated. Otherwise they wouldn't keep our real listing. Yeah. Long story short, he was like 64 years old, live in a house over 3000 square feet. It was 
very hard for him to go up and down the stairs and he had a little dog. So I could hear his motivation for downsizing. Yeah. Long story short, ended up setting an appointment, represented him, and also the buyer came through. It was right under a million. And it was from an expired that I could have easily said, you know, I'm going to stop calling. And he was the last one. It was like 440 when I got a hold of this gentleman. So you just never know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I applaud you from that direction because a lot of times what ends up happening is, you know, it's it's four o'clock. We get tired. We don't do with what we're supposed to do. And then we just say, eh, I'll just do it again tomorrow. But when you have that integrity within yourself and you actually fulfill that commitment, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and get rewarded. You know, we're going to get rewarded for our effort. And I'm going to share very, very quickly the amount of times that I would go and knock on a door. I would telephone prospect going with what you're saying, Loida, the amount of appointments that were set on either the very, very last door or the very last contact, that was like being rewarded for our integrity. So I applaud you, um, you know, for with what you just mentioned. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I like to tell every age, especially when you're new one and you're watching this, and you want to go after expired. Mm -hmm. There's going to be someone out there, whether it's a family or a homeowner that needs to sell and you're going to be the agent for them. So yeah. don't think, oh, well, if Lloyd is calling, like she's probably going to get all the listings. I'm probably not. And if you call them when I'm not calling, maybe you get that listing appointment. So again, there's more than enough people out there for you to start having these conversations and you get better one phone call at a time. As long as you're working on your skills and you're putting in the work, because if you say, oh, well, Lloyd, I called five people, nobody, nobody answered. So calling expires doesn't work. Then you just haven't put in enough work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Let's see, we're still getting some questions. I think I saw this one from Mo. Do you have an app you suggest to get their phone numbers? I know we covered it earlier. Um, there's a lot of different uh, sources out there that mm -hmm. you can subscribe to that, that provide you phone numbers. Um, myself and Robert, we have used Vulcan 7. There's a link also in the description if you guys are interested in that. But again, depending on your budget, you can shop around and see what might work for you. Uh, we just recommend for you to get something so that you're not taking time out of your day to look up phone numbers and put it in the spreadsheet. I remember a while back, an agent told me she was doing that and she was only able to talk to five people in one day and three of them were wrong numbers. Yep. So, I mean, you just want to be effective with your time when it comes to that. Absolutely. Keep on dropping your questions because we're going to get ready to wrap this up soon. And again, if you have been enjoying this, let us know. Let us know. Drop us a comment. Give us a like. Um, Rebecca said that my story just helped her. There you go. You're welcome. You know, and you know, that crazy story with that gentleman. So we sold the property. He was going to purchase another one. So it was a sale and a purchase. So you just never know how many transactions might come from someone that you call as an expired. Yeah. I think the only thing that I kind of want to add as well, Lloyd, is what we talked about, um, you know, in our session yesterday about, um, uh, you know, people that go to school and I'm not trying to put anybody in a sense down, but we go to school, right? For those of you that have got that have a degree, you'll go to school for two, four, six, eight years and you go educate yourself so that you can go and get a seventy five hundred thousand dollar a year job. Right. Well, now you come into real estate and you practice the one time you don't call this source, you don't call that other source and then you do it for maybe a month, two or three and then you give up on it. Um, it takes time. It, it really takes time. So you have to invest. Well, you don't have to do anything, but I would encourage you to invest time to educate yourself, get skilled up, and then be a little bit patient in the process. I'll share with you guys the uh, non-highlights. It's always, it's, it's always, um, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, this is what's great about Robert, <laughs> um, but I want to share with you the lowlights. It took me three years, okay, to get my first expired. It took me four years to get my first FISBO. Now, let me talk a little bit about that because I also don't want you guys to think that it's going to take you that long. I was 22 years old when I started and I didn't have the skill set uh, initially um, to, to, of course, capture that. So as I continue to get better, I matured in life and I matured in my business and I continued to work on it. I eventually became really good at it. Uh, but you can only do that if you invest the time and energy in your skills and you invest the time and energy in terms of, of course, getting better. And you know what's funny? I don't think if you know, but I know that you were just talking about going to school. So before I got into real estate, I was actually in a master's program to get my master's in business, to get my MBA. And I ended up dropping out of that to pursue real estate full time. Um, because to me, I was just, I was paying out of pocket for that program and it was thousands and thousands of dollars. And I knew for a fact that if I stuck to this business, 
the opportunities would be endless and there was no cap for me to like a ceiling. Um, yeah. My belief back then was, you know, if I get my master's degree, that yeah. that will allow me to get a corporate job and make six figures. But when I started to see, you know, what I could do with real estate, if I stuck to it and I knew it was not going to be easy, I was going to surpass that. So I ended up dropping out and, you know, it was probably one of the best decisions that I've done and <laughs> made me a lot of money. <laughs> but that's just my personal story. I wanted to relate it back to going to school. Yeah, that, that's a great story. I love that. Yes. Um, let's see. Celeste asks, will this be on the channel? This is. This is recorded. You can watch the replay. Um, and again, if you have any other questions, let us know. Rebecca says, so you're saying even if you're not the first to call in the morning, it could still work when it comes to expired. 100%. Yeah. You just have to make an effort. I mean, there, there are things um, that you can actually help on not having to fail as much. <laughs> One of them, of course, is attending the classes that Lloyd and I uh, are referencing to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's definitely a way. The second thing is get skilled up because in that you start to learn about when to call them, what to say, how to handle objections, when to give up, when not to give up, all that other good stuff. Um, and then I'll just put a very quick plug in. There's some videos that I have separate from just expired on my YouTube channel, which is the same handle, the Robert Villanueva. And and on there, I talk about learning how to actually study the scripts. I think that's actually a really good one um, for some of the questions questions being asked in the audience as well. Yes, and your YouTube channel link is also in the description box. So for anything that we probably mentioned, go ahead and just go to the description box of this YouTube video. Everything is there. Check out um, Robert's YouTube channel because he has a lot more videos on there. And I'm not talking about like four or five minute videos. These are like, you know, 20, 30 minute training videos so if you think that this was good a lot of the stuff in his channel is probably a lot better and more specific to what you want to learn um and the last question this is not regarding expired but maybe you have a video on your youtube channel regarding circle prospecting or any i don't know any way that you want to address it regarding uh circle prospecting and getting results yeah, as a matter of fact, I had to break up a two part series for that, which is the just listed. Um, and that was literally the last two um, videos that I put out. Um, so, I, yes, I would encourage you to go out there and watch the, the those two videos, uh, because no matter what I say next, then 90 seconds won't do the justice of the 45, 50 minutes that I put together in those two videos. But I will say this in regards to when it comes time to just listed, your competition with just listed or circle prospecting is minimal. There's not too many agents that you're competing with. The second thing is, is that it's endless. And what I mean by endless, well, today expired, well, there was three of them. Okay, well, I'm gonna call those three. If I make the decision right now, as soon as we're done with this, I can go and knock on as many doors as I want and I, until I get tired, you know, um, or, you know, basically I get uh, handcuffed by the cop for, you know, <laughs> you know I'm just kidding. Um, and the same thing with the phones. I can also pick up the phone and call endlessly. That's the one, um, well, basically the two main reasons why I really enjoy the circle prospecting as much. And just to clear it up, how much is the class? The class is a full investment of anywhere from 20 to 35 minutes of your time. As far as dollar wise is concerned, nothing. <laughs> so we want you to get results and that's how much it's going to cost. You got to yeah, let us exactly. know when you get your listings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, let's, let's be, let's be a little transparent in regards to that. Number one, the reason why Lloyd and I do this is because, you know, we love to educate our audience. We love to give back. You know, when people ask me, what do I do for a living? I don't say I'm a realtor. I say I make millionaires and I take tremendous pride in that. But the other part of that, um, the the other benefit with real with um, Lloyd and I in regards to the the, the uh, company that we're a part of with Real, um, it gives us the opportunity to be able to collaborate. I mean, I've always known Lloyd from a distance, you know, and I think Lloyd has known me for like five and a half minutes, <laughs> right? Um, but now that we're doing this, it gives us the opportunity to collaborate. So, um, you know, we educate people, we have an audience, you know, we're providing great content, at least in my opinion, I think it is because this is stuff that we've done that has actually been successful versus reading it out of a book and coaching off of theory, or I heard that one person, this is stuff that's actually being used and being coached with that we're using. So take advantage of that because, um, yeah, it doesn't cost anything. There you go. So we hope that today's session has been very helpful. 
Um, once again, make sure to follow Robert on Instagram, me on Instagram as well. Our handles are there. Subscribe to our channels and let us know what you want to see next because we're going to be doing live streams again. Um, during the week, we're going to be inside of the Top Realtor Training Facebook group. Any last things that you want to leave um, people with before we wrap this up? Um, I think if anything, that part of um, um, our business is the mindset side of things. And this is something that we have to address from time to time. Um, even with the audience that we're working with in the mornings, there's always this hesitation. There's always this, okay, I'm going to listen to with what they're saying. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to write down, oh, that's a good note, right? And I know some of you guys are doing that right now, but there is not the application of it. And it's really interesting because I heard um, somebody say uh, um, uh, recently that uh, it's kind of like trying to teach somebody how to drive while they're parked. And what I basically means by that is, is that until you put the car in motion, you're not going to actually truly learn how to drive. And it's the same thing with the real estate business. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's intimidating. I hate cold calling, all this other stuff. At the end of the day, prepare yourself, skill yourself up, get your mindset in the right position because you are going to fail and you're going to fail a lot. Okay. But you have to be acceptant of that. But what I want you to do is I want you to fail forward. Because on the other side of that failure, there is no success without fail. So I just want you to fail fast and I want you to fail forward. And skills pay the bills. Skills and one pay. last thing, you uh -huh. know, for me, when I started, when I was brand new, I remember, I remember role playing every single day with different agents from different parts of the country. Everyone had like different accents. I remember I had a, a role play partner out of New York and he was very like, uh, I'm like, <laughs> don't give me on the phone. But uh -huh. I got so good with handling drivers by uh -huh. role playing with him. Um, but my point is, you know, I got very good at having the response at the tip of my tongue when I was calling expired. Yeah. So you would give me your objection. I already know what I'm gonna say next. And because yeah. I was practicing, I remember I have always called with a mirror in front of me. I would have like a little swagger smile as I'm, you know, handling and, and calling expired because I know what to say next that will lead me to the result that I want of listing of getting uh, an appointment. But again, it took me putting myself out there and getting uncomfortable making these phone calls and role playing. Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point I thought that role playing was corny. I'm like, you know, I know what to say. I know what's in the script, but why do I have to role play? Yeah. And once I started to do it and I started to get on the phones and I saw how good I was, I'm like, man, I'm over here like a smooth operator <laughs> setting <laughs> listing appointments and it just boosted my confidence. So yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there because maybe some of you are not role playing enough or maybe you're struggling with role play partners. Mm -hmm. um, but again, in this Facebook group, there's probably people in there that you can role play obviously with us during the week. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's the last thing that I wanted to leave you guys with. So thank you so much for tuning in. We had a lot of people watching. Make sure to stay tuned for the next one that we're going to do. But until then, we'll see you inside of the Top Realtor training. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>